So after having my coaching business for the past year, here is some of the things I would do if I was to start from scratch. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year to you all. I wish nothing but happiness, health, success and freedom in 2021. So in today's video, I wanted to start off the new year talking about some of the things that I would do if I was to start my business from scratch. So I know that you are probably watching this video wanting to start a business but not knowing where to start. This is going to be the video for you so you can learn from the things that I wish I did a lot sooner so you can get yourself 10 steps ahead. Just in case you are new around here, my name is Montel B. On this channel, we talk all things business, confidence and mindset. I'm super excited for this year and I want you to come along on this journey with us. So make sure you do hit that subscribe button, turn these notifications on, let's start this year with a bang. So the first thing I would do if I was to start my business from scratch is get as much experience as possible before focusing on anything else. Before focusing on the branding, the website, the name, building a course, I would first make sure I've got experience. There's a difference between us being the living example of the transformation and then actually getting those transformation and results for others. So when I started my journey, I created a full course. I thought, yep, this is everything that people need to know without even testing whether this was what people needed to know. So if I was to start again, I would get so much more experience, but I'd get intentional experience. See, I was getting experience, but I wasn't really doing anything with it. I wasn't making any necessary changes. I was just kind of getting people on the phone, talking to them a bunch, and then not doing anything else with that. So be intentional with the experience you get in. Whether you're going to reach out to family, friends, people online to get experience in your business, coaching, whatever it is, make sure you are taking that extra step to document the full process. When you're getting experience, you want to document what worked well, the lessons you've learned, any challenges, any setbacks, any growth you experienced, any aha moments. Make sure all of this is being documented. Trust me, it will make your process a lot quicker when it comes to putting yourself out there and starting your business. Number two is investing in a coach a lot sooner. So it wasn't until around six months into my coaching journey when I invested in my first coach. Before that, I was overwhelmed. I was confused. I thought I was running a business when in reality I was just running an Instagram account. I wasn't generating any sales. Like I say, I was getting people on calls but nothing was really coming of it. And I just wasn't as making as much progress as I thought I was making. Yes, I had an amazing Instagram account, but that was about it. So I finally decided, okay, I need support with this. I've done as much as I can by myself. I've done all the research. I've downloaded the freebies. I've been on YouTube but I need that support from someone who has been there and done it. So as soon as I invested in my first business coach, which of course was a scary investment at the time, it also felt like such a breath of fresh air. Things started to click, it started to become easier. I wasn't overthinking the simple task because I had that support and that accountability. So I would absolutely invest in a coach as soon as possible. If you've got the means to invest, if you've got the financial, funds then go ahead and do it it will be a great experience for you however with that being said you also want to do your due diligence when it comes to hiring a coach you do not want to go for the first one that you see because they may not always be the best coach for you so make sure you're doing that research on them checking their reviews checking their testimonials before making the commitment so for number three if i was to start my business again i would absolutely give an idea chance to work before moving on to the next i have a tendency and you may do too to have all of these amazing ideas be so multifaceted want to do absolutely everything like yesterday and in that process it's easy to become 
overwhelmed or disencouraged when you do not see things working immediately. So that makes you want to move on to the next thing. So you are really gonna have to start practicing patience here and giving your idea a chance to really take off before moving to the next. It's not that it's a bad idea, it's just that you haven't given it enough time and dedication and energy as well. So make sure that you decide upon one idea and give it a chance to work. And you're probably thinking, okay, but how do I know when I give it enough time and it's just not going to work? So there's a few different ways that you can do this. You can either set a goal for what you want to achieve. I know that a lot of business owners set a money goal for example they're not going to move on to another idea before they hit a hundred thousand pounds or dollars within the first idea so that's a goal that they set themselves or you could say okay I'm going to try this idea for 12 months if it doesn't work then I'll move on to the next so set yourself a goal but again make it reasonable do not say you want to have a six-figure business in the next three months yes it may be possible but the chances are it's not gonna be that possible. And you're gonna get discouraged and you're gonna move on to the next when this idea could have worked in month four or month five or even month 12, which is still amazing. So just give yourself a reasonable amount of time to finish an idea and see it through before moving on to the next. The next thing I would do if I was to start my business again is spend a lot more time on market research and building my authority. Before jumping straight into a business, you of course need to have a community and an audience to sell to. So I would spend a lot more time giving away free value, putting out more content, being visible in all the right spaces. So when it finally comes to me launching and me having something to sell, it would make the process a lot easier. As opposed to keeping everything on the DL and being very secretive, and then all of a sudden coming out with this full blown course and expecting everyone to buy it when they haven't built that trust, they don't know about the product, so why would they invest? And then the next thing I would do if I was to start my business again is outsource my website design. Or for that matter, outsource anything that I don't wanna do. Personally, for me, it was definitely the website design. It took me around three to four months to create my WordPress website. Now, with that being said, I was very slowly working on it. I know I probably could have done it a lot quicker, but I just wasn't feeling that inspired. And I was also doing web design as a side hustle at the time. So I think that kind of put me off and I was like, I don't wanna do this. So it took me around three months. And then by the end of the three months, I probably used that website for maybe six months or so not even that i probably use it less than six months until i changed it and i moved on so that just wasted so much time so i would definitely outsource and i'd rather invest financially to gain back my time in tasks that i do not want to do so that is it for this video they are the five things that i would do differently if i was to start my business again so i do want you to take these on board when it comes to building your own business because i can assure you this will get you a lot further along in the long run. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And again, I just want to say a massive happy new year to you. Hope you have the best year yet. That is it for this video. I will see you in my next one. Peace.